Welcome to a mini lecture on the Alexander polynomial. Uh, the Alexander polynomial is like the determinant, um, but more complicated. More complicated because instead of having integers as our coefficients and as our result, uh, we're going to have polynomials instead. So let us see. Ah, by the way, this is all on page 27 of the notes. So on the left, I'll show you how to compute the Alexander polynomial. And on the right, I'll show you an example. Now, the Alexander polynomial, it's called delta L of t. Um, so L is the link whose Alexander polynomial it is. And t, well, it's a polynomial in a variable t. And something I really want to emphasize is that it's of an oriented link L. If you don't orient the link, it doesn't work. It's not possible. OK, so. Here's step zero. Choose a diagram with no closed curves. And here I am on the right. I've chosen my diagram with no closed curves there. Step number one, write down the polynomial colouring equations. What are they? Well, if I start with a crossing in my diagram, uh, whose arcs are named A, B, and C, as I've shown, then the polynomial colouring equation is this equation right here. Now, how do you remember that? Well, you remember it in steps. One step is that you start at the positive end of the overstrand. And go clockwise. What do I mean by the positive end of the overstrand? Well, the overstrand um, because our diagram is of an oriented link, the overstrand has an arrow on it telling us which direction to go. And that's the end we start at, there. And then we work clockwise. And what do we do as we work clockwise? We write down the names of the arcs. So the place where I started, the name of that arc was A. Going clockwise, the name of the next arc was C. Uh, going clockwise again, the name of that arc, well, that was A again, right? And going clockwise finally, uh, we get B. And then we apply our coefficients. And the coefficients you just have to remember. They go 1, t, minus t, minus 1. And if I combine those coefficients with uh, those variables, what I get is 1 times a plus t times c minus t times a minus 1 times b equals 0. And the 1 times things I might as well erase. So I get back the equation I had before. So let me repeat. Start at the positive end, go clockwise, write down the names of the arcs, uh, write down your list of coefficients. It goes 1, t, minus t, minus 1. And then you take uh, you apply these coefficients to these variables in that order. Okay, so let's do that over here in the example. And let's choose, uh, ah, well, let me name my crossings like I normally do. So let's call them x0, x1, x2, x3. And then if I name my crossings, well, blue, blue, uh, green, green, pink, pink and orange orange then um, let's try and work out what happens at the blue crossing well I need to know which is the positive end of the overstrand and if you look at it um, then you see that that's the one pointing down so let me write down the name of my arcs going clockwise it's x0 next round that's x3 Actually, let's make a bit more space. Let's move everything to the left. OK, x0, where was I? Here, positive end of the overstrand, x0, x3, x0, x1. Uh, and what are the coefficients? They go 1. Plus t. Minus t minus 1. 
equals zero. Okay, so uh, I now dare you to write down the polynomial coloring equations at every other crossing. Uh, pause the video and have a go. Here are my answers. Um, so at green, the positive overcrossing is x1. It's here. So it's going to be x1 plus t going round clockwise, x0 minus t x1 minus the final one is x2 equals 0. Uh, pink, the positive overcrossing is x2. Then it's minus t, no, plus t times what happens when I go clockwise, I get x1 minus t times x2 again minus and the final one is x3. And at orange, the positive overstrand is x3 uh, plus t times go clockwise, I get x2 minus t times x3 clockwise finally uh, minus x0 equals 0. So that was our step number one. Now we go on to step number two, which is that we form the matrix of coefficients P plus, uh, like we did with the coloring matrix, uh, to, to obtain the coloring matrix plus the thing we called A plus before. So uh, let's do that. We want to write down P plus, and it's going to be a matrix whose columns are, sorry, whose rows are the crossings. So let's make something whose names are the crossings and its columns are the arcs x0, x1, x2, x3. We're going to give a matrix and under in the blue row we're going to put the coefficients in the blue equation. Uh, so x0 appeared with coefficient 1 minus t, x3 appeared with coefficient t, x1 appeared with coefficient minus 1, and x2 didn't appear at all. Under green, x0 appeared with coefficient t, x1 appeared with coefficient 1 minus t, x2 with coefficient minus 1, and x3 not at all. Okay, why don't you again pause and try and work this out yourself for the pink and orange rows. Here is my solution. Uh, so continuing in the pink equation, x2 appears with coefficient 1 minus t, uh, x1 appears with coefficient t, x3 with coefficient minus 1, and x0 with coefficient 0. In orange, x3 has coefficient 1 minus t, um, x2 has coefficient t, x0 minus 1, and x1 not at all. Okay, so that was step number two. Step number three, delete a row and column to get P. Okay, so that's fine. Let's take a copy of P plus. Let's delete the top row and the left-hand column to get our P. P. Whoops. So there is P. Is it going to fit on the previous line? No. Let's not take no for an answer. There we go. And now uh, we can finish the computation with step four, which is that the Alexander polynomial delta L is the determinant of P. So delta L of T is debt P. So P, you see, is a matrix of polynomials. The entries are polynomials in T. Very simple polynomials, 1 minus T and T and minus 1, but nevertheless polynomials in T. So that when I work out the determinant in the usual way, what I'm going to get is a polynomial in T. So let's see what happens. Well, in this case, I'm going to have 1 minus T times the determinant of this square matrix, which is 1 minus t squared, 
plus t. And then I'm going to have plus 1 for that minus 1 times t into 1 minus t. Okay, so this is going to be an unpleasant computation. This is going to be 1 minus t times what happens when I expand out in here, I'll get t squared minus 2t plus t uh, plus 1. And then I get plus t into 1 minus t. So this is going to be equal to, uh, hold on to your hats, t squared minus t plus 1 minus t cubed plus t squared minus t plus t minus t squared, which is equal to, gather the terms, minus t cubed. Oh, actually, <clears throat> let's be super cheeky and technological. God, I feel smug right now. Okay, uh, so how many t squareds are there? One, two, minus one. So just one. So let's get rid of all except one of the plus ones. There we go, t done. How about t's? There's a minus t, a minus t, and a plus t. Well, these two here cancel out. Goodbye. And that's the result there. So let's write it out in order. That's minus t cubed plus t squared minus t plus 1. And see, it looks like nothing happened. Brilliant. OK, so that's the Alexander polynomial of this oriented link. Now just to end the lecture, I want to give you some warnings. Bright red warnings. Um, actually, let's make the warnings bright red. There we go. Um, so, first warning. Actually, that's horrible, isn't it? There we go. Uh, first warning, there's no Geritz version, right? In the determinant, we can make life easier for ourselves by using the Geritz matrix. What was good about the Geritz matrix was it was much smaller, typically, um, than the Connery matrix. Well. There's no such thing here. And so as a com consequence, computations are tough, right? The number of crossings in your diagram, that's uh, going to determine the size of the matrix you use, and that's going to determine how long it takes you to work out the, um, the determinant of your matrix. Warning number two, delta L of T is a Laurent polynomial. Um, so I recommend you go to the notes, have a look at definition 5.1 to see what that means. Um, the real warning is the third one. Different choices uh, lead to results that differ by signs and by powers of t. So if you make a different choice of diagram, different choice of which row and column of your matrix to delete, um, then the resulting Alexander polynomial can change. It could change by a sign. It could change by a power of t, by which I mean it might be t squared times what you expected. Um, or it might be t to the minus 2 times what you expected. Um, so bear this in mind. It's not well defined up to equality. Um, and so to deal with this, we introduce the following notation. We say that two polynomials are equal dot. See, the equals has a dot over it. If they differ only by a sign and only by powers of t. And then with uh, that definition, it turns out that the Alexander polynomial is well defined up to this equal dot. Okay, so that's the end of the mini-lecture.